This is What You Can Do About Taking Control of Your Own Health, a podcast for people interested in learning how to create bodies that are healthy, strong, fit, and disease resistant. I'm Sean McClendon, your host. I'm a certified personal trainer. I am an author and a health and fitness enthusiast. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to go ahead and say, if you hear any sort of extra sounds or anything, um, my kids are home for fall break. They normally aren't necessarily home when I'm recording, um, but you know, they have a tendency to, you know, make extra noises and whatnot. So if you hear that, you understand what's going on. Um, but the show must go on, as they say. Um, in this episode, and I'm excited to talk about what I'm going to talk about in this episode. But in this episode, I want to talk about how you changing your perspective about the way that you see yourself um, can make a world of difference in regard to you conquering your cravings, the things that are holding you back from being, you know, physically healthy. Okay. Um, But before we get into it, my featured book for this episode is my book titled, What You Can Do About Belly Fat. So almost everyone at some point has wondered how to get rid of belly fat. And most people, no matter what they do, can seem to get rid of it. So in my book, What You Can Do About Belly Fat, you'll learn about why fat accumulates around the midsection. You will learn about the importance of paying attention to visceral fat, um, which is fat that um, resides around your internal organs. And you'll receive key exercise, eating, and lifestyle strategies to help your body target belly fat based on my personal training experience, as well as from my own experience in lowering my body fat to around 10%. So if you're ready to take steps to melt belly fat away naturally and keep it away, this is your book. Buy it on Amazon using the link in the description. All right. So I'm going to do something a little different in this episode of the podcast. I'm not going to record fully with this microphone here. So you'll see in a moment. Um, um, because I kind of want to do something graphically. But anyhow, let's go ahead and get to it, man. This is going to be an exciting um, episode. All right, here we go. So my pastor, um, Pastor Dominique Johnson, um, mentioned something in a sermon recently. Um, and I've heard other people say it too. And it's really kind of making me think about some of the issues that we kind of tend to face, come up with, um, come up against when it pertains to our health. And it is the, the concept of the fact that when you look at a person, like when you look at me, um, what you see is not the real me. What you see is the physical representation of who I am, whereas the real me is like on the inside, so to speak. You know, like my consciousness or whatever you want to call it, I don't know. Um, But anyhow, so your body is not the real you. Your body is like just the physical representation of who you are. Now, let me draw something here. All right, so um, so we'll do this. And those of you who know me pretty well know that I actually can draw a little bit, um, but for the sake of this podcast, I'm not gonna like, um, you know, go all in, so to speak. So this is just a person. You are not, your body, like the, you can pinch the meat on your arm and all that kind of stuff. That's the physical representation of you. But it's not the real you. It's just the physical part. Now, what does this have to do with our topic? Which our our topic, again, is, you know, how you changing your perspective can help you to conquer your cravings. When you feel cravings, you know, it's like you feel those cravings in a in a couple of different ways. So you you have, um, so let's see. So when we feel cravings, let's really think about what happens when we feel cravings for, for example, ice cream or whatever it is that you would call your quote, um, vice. I don't necessarily care too much for that term. Uh, because I think sometimes it could give too much power to whatever that particular thing is. But anyhow, don't worry about all that. So first of all, you have a physical 
feeling. So you have like a, a feeling in your body like hunger or thirst. And so it's like a, a feeling in your stomach or a feeling like in your mouth that's associated with a craving. Then you have like a mental um, thought, essentially, that is associated with the thing that you want. You have a thought that comes across your mind, you know, I want fill in the blank. Whatever that thing is, you want it. It just, a, you know, and if you notice it, it's kind of like a, it's a real quick kind of thing. It just happens really quickly. I want whatever, you know, or such and such would be good right now. And then another thing associated with that, I would say is like an emotional, emotional um feeling. Or, um yeah, we'll just call it emotional feeling. Which is like you literally have like a like a longing, like it feels like it can feel like you know like a type of angst that you don't have that thing right now. You could be frustrated. Um. And you know what I mean, if you've ever craved something, like you, of course you feel hunger or thirst, you have a thought about a particular thing, um, like for example, for me, um, it was, you know, it was, and sometimes still is, like a Coke, a good can or, or, or fountain Coca-Cola. Um, and then there's, a, there's an emotional feeling, there's like a longing, just like that, that, ooh, I, I want that, man, that would be good. You know, it's like that, that extra kind of oomph behind whatever it is that kind of takes it from being just an ordinary hunger or thirst to like just a full feeling for like desiring that particular thing. Now, why am I bringing all this stuff up? You know, I'm not trying to get all philosophical on you, but I think that it's really important to think about this this way. The reason why I'm saying that is because all of these are things that we experience. Um, whenever we crave something. Now, if we're not careful, we'll identify so much with this part and this part, the physical feeling of hunger and that emotional feeling like that, that, that push that makes you really, really desire you know, the ice cream or the Coca-Cola or whatever, we'll identify so much with these that we'll almost kind of like, in a sense, miss that quick mental thought that comes across. And what am I saying with this? What I'm saying is the thought itself, you know, is not necessarily a thought that comes from you. It doesn't really come from you. It's a thought that just kind of comes across your mind. A lot of times a thought is really what initiates everything. But if you recognize, so I'm going to do this here. Go ahead and draw this here. If you ever pay attention to like whenever you have a thought, a lot of times what happens is, you have a thought and then the physical feeling and the emotional feeling kind of come behind that. And so if you, if you're not careful, you'll miss the fact that a lot of times it started with a thought. It didn't really start with the emotion or the physical feeling. And so what I'm saying is if a, if a thought initiates everything, so let me write that. So the thought about the craving initiates 
the physical and the mental. I mean the and the emotional feelings. So the thought initiates everything. But think about this. Think about the, th the, the fact that the thought is actually a thing. The thought is not really you. The thought doesn't even really come from you. The thought, if you really think about it, is something that you notice. Now, it's a very quick thing. It's very, very quick. But a thought is something that you can kind of notice. You can kind of pay attention to the fact that you had a thought. That's, I mean, it's profound, really. But let me say it again, like the thought is not you. The thought is something that comes across your mind. But it is not you. OK, so like what happens is we think that the thoughts are us. And what we do is we kind of tend to like function. We just kind of going about our day and we just. We just exist. And so we have a thought and we act on it. We have a thought and we act on it. We have a thought about, oh, man, I want a, um, you know, I want to I want some ice cream now. And so you don't even give yourself a chance to think about the, th the fact that you had that thought. You just thought, then you feel the physical, you feel the emotional, and then you kind of act on it. But what I'm saying is the real you. The real you is is like that part of you that's able to choose. It's that part of you that's able to decide. Um, again, going back to what I was saying earlier, your your body is not really the real you. It's just a, it's just a part of who you are. It's like a representation of who you are. It's kind of like an avatar, so to speak. You know, to borrow from, you know, like the movie, those movies, the avatar movies or whatever. It's like your avatar, but it's not really like you you it's like you 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 is kind of like your consciousness but your body is like your avatar it's kind of like what you're inside of the bible calls it like you know an earthen vessel okay and so i'm saying all that to say that we identify so much with our thoughts that we just kind of act on our thoughts rather than realizing that we can choose whether or not we act on our thoughts. The real you chooses. But a lot of us are moving so fast through life that we have a thought and before we know it, we've kind of already, we're already deeply immersed in the, the physical and the emotional aspects of things. And so we, grab onto that thought and we own it and then we act on it. The real you, and I, I tell my kids this, the real you is almost kind of like a, you know, like you, if you've ever played a video game, you have a controller of some kind and you use the controller to kind of move your little person on the screen, you know, move Mario or move, you know, whoever from whatever video game you're playing and you make them jump, you make them, just do stuff you you make them do whatever you want them to do so that's kind of like what a real part of you is it's like that part of you that notices things the part of you that independent of any emotions that you have independent of any feelings that you have it's the part of you that really decides everything and so we're so used to in our society kind of like leaning into like i say our thoughts and then from there like our feelings and all that kind of stuff that we forget that there is an executive us that really has the ability to choose everything, to actually choose what we do. Okay. So my whole point with this podcast is you are, you're not your body. You actually see the thoughts about indulging, indulging in your craving before you act on them. But what you have to do is you have to start to really be able to get in touch with that and to understand that you can actually choose to do something different. So let me write that down. You can choose to do something 
different. So making it practical, when I, um, and I recorded a podcast before about whenever I was, um, you know, really, really indulging in Coca-Cola a lot and, and, and whatnot. And, um, and I finally came to that point where I was like, this is ridiculous, man. And so what did I do? I chose to fast from it. I chose just to kind of get away from it all together. Now, if you heard that, what I just said, and you kind of had like some sort of internal reaction, like, ooh, I couldn't do that. Notice that. Notice that. That was a thought that came across your mind. And then you had an associated feeling, an associated emotion, um, you know, with that. And you immediately leaned into it. But realize even that was a choice. And again, that's very profound. Even to me talking about this now, it's just profound. But this is one of the reasons why some people succeed and some people don't when it comes to like revamping and taking control of your own health. It's because you start to recognize that the real you is the one who's in charge. The real you is the one who decides, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I'm going to take control of my health or I'm just going to just, you know, uh, I'm just going to just do whatever I want to do. Something happens, it happens. I'm going to get a hamburger or I'm going to get a salad. I'm going to cook my food or I'm just going to pick up fast food. You're actually deciding these things, but we've been trained to kind of think so fast that we don't notice that we're choosing. But you are. You are. You actually are choosing those things. So if you can choose to do one thing, you can choose to do something opposite. Okay? So keep that in mind. You can choose the opposite thing. All right? So as as far as it pertains to your cravings, whatever your craving is, You can overcome that craving if you change your perspective and understand the fact that there is a real you that notices everything that goes on like internally and externally. And you have to realize that's the part of you that can actually choose stuff. If you realize that, then you will realize that you can take the time and notice what you're thinking about. Then when you notice what, when you notice that you'll notice whenever you start having a craving for, you know, something sweet or you have a craving for, you know, fries or whatever it is. And then realizes in that moment, you have a decision to make. Now, if you said that you wanted to, you know, main goal a lot of people have is losing weight if you said you wanted to lose weight then you already know drinking sweet drinks all the time you can't do it you know eating fries eating late eating a whole lot of you know high energy foods a lot of bread a lot of processed food that's not going to cut it it's just not so that's where you have a decision to make if you really want whatever that is that's the moment where you say i'm not doing that I'm doing something different because this is contrary to my goal. You're going to have emotion associated with that. Just because you make the decision doesn't mean that you're not going to still feel those feelings that are associated with the craving. But that's where you lean into like your executive ability to choose. Again, I think what happens is we think we think I N K we will feel like it. Or feel like doing it rather. We often think that we're gonna feel like doing whatever it is that we that we need to do. We feel like we're gonna feel like you know, putting down the The vice, the fries, the soda, the energy drinks, you know, whatever it is, the coffee, whatever. We feel like we're going to feel like doing that. But 
99% of the time, you're not going to feel like it. It's just something that you know that you're going to, you need to do. And you're going to have to make that choice. But what I will tell you, let me go back. So I had a friend who, um, you know, would talk about praying, praying away the craving for fries. And I get it. I get that. You know, man, I even had people who said that they, that's kind of been their experience. That hasn't really been my experience, but a little bit of, a few people have said that, but for the most part, like you still have to, what, what happens is you still going to have that craving, but you have to just decide what you're going to do or what you're not going to do. And what I will tell you is, and I'm about to wrap this up. When you decide to make a, when you decide, when you choose to not indulge and you choose again and again and again, what happens is your, your those feelings, that physical feeling, that emotional feeling will start to line up with whatever it is that you're actually choosing. When you choose opposite of whatever that thought is, it'll take a little bit of time, but you're your, the feeling part will start to kind of like align with your choices. It will. It will. You just have to understand that your feelings don't have power over you. Those cravings don't have power over you unless you give them power. Okay? Man, I hope this is really getting in there. Um, I really hope this is like tapping into um that you're getting this, for lack of better words, okay? So remember, you are not your feelings. You are not your body. Your body is just a physical representation of who you are. And therefore, if this thing that you're trying to take care of, if this thing you're trying to take care of is not the real you, is not the full you, then you have, you have control over this thing. You have control. All right, so I hope that this episode has really been enlightening to you, um, that it helps to empower you to kind of see how the how your those people you admire with the bodies that you want, um, or how people get the results that you want, whether it be like I say the you know aesthetic look or health status or whatever. Um, this is how they do it. This is how they do it. They actually take control. They they take a very, very active role in examining what they're thinking about and noticing. They notice whenever they have those contrary thoughts and they intentionally choose. And then those feelings line up eventually with whatever they're actually choosing to do. That's how you do it. OK, that's how you do it. So hopefully this enlightened you. Um, I hope you'll share it with somebody. I hope you'll comment. Give me your comments. Let me know what you think about this. Um, make sure you get your copy of my book, what you can do about belly fat in the description below. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast. Make sure you like it on this episode. Make sure you share it. Like I said, and always remember that your doctor is not responsible for your health. You are God bless you.